Hey everybody, I'm back at one of my favorite engine builders, Automotive Specialist, where they just finished up this gorgeous small block Chevrolet that is topped with four two barrel boiler fuel injectors. Pretty sweet setup. But what's cool about this is, this is actually a sister engine to one we covered in Horsepower Monster previously. I'll put a link to it up here or in the description below, and you can see that entire build there. The only thing different is the fuel injection system. So I thought this would be a great test. We're gonna look at carburetors versus eight stack fuel injection. Check it out. Like I mentioned earlier, both of these engines are exactly the same except for the induction system and obviously the ignition to work with the electronically controlled fuel injection. This is a 400 cubic inch engine package Dorton puts together for customers looking for a small block Chevy with great power potential on pump gas and also excellent durability. It starts with a cast iron Dart SHP block with four bolt mains and after being fully machined is stuffed with a forged Molnar stroker crankshaft with a total stroke of 3.75 inches. Attached to the crank are a set of 6 inch Molnar H-beam connecting rods and Molly pistons with a slight dish to keep the compression of pump gas friendly 9.7 to 1. There's also a lightweight 1.2 millimeter ring package and coated bearings from ACL for both the rods and the mains. The valve train is a hydraulic roller. Both the cam and rockers are from crane cams. The camshaft is a billet roller with 236 degrees of duration on the intakes and 244 on the exhaust, both at 50 thousandths of an inch of tappet lift. The tie bar hydraulic rollers are also from crane as well as the aluminum bodied full roller rockers. Combined with the 1.5 to 1 ratio rocker arms, total valve lift will be 548 thousandths for the intakes and 558 for the exhausts. Up top, Dorton uses a set of AFR's Eliminator Street fully CNC'd aluminum cylinder heads. These heads from AFR have proven to be a great value for the power they can produce. Both the intake and the exhaust ports, as well as the chambers, are all finished up on a CNC cutter for precise shape and volume and the intake ports are sized at 195 cc's while the chambers are 65 cc's. The stainless intake valves are 2 inches 50 thousandths and the exhausts are an inch 600 thousandths. Those valves are controlled by a set of packed valve springs and as we've already mentioned the rockers are aluminum bodied units from Crane. Those are the basics but there are a few differences between the carbureted and the EFI engines. For the carbureted unit, the intake manifold is a single plane Victor Jr. from Edelbrock, which makes great power high in the RPM range. The ignition system is from MSD with a pro billet distributor and a CD ignition box. All high-end stuff, but not really anything that's one-off or exotic custom. We tested the carb engine with two different carburetor options. The first was a Holley 750 CFM brawler carb which does a fantastic job of producing great power with good tunability for a great price. And it did well, producing 516.5 pound-feet of torque and 536.75 horsepower. But we suspected this big 400-inch engine could use a little more air, so we tried it with an 830 CFM Holly double pumper. Let's hear this run on the dyno. So here's the dyno chart with both runs. On this chart, the green line is the torque for the 830 carb and the purple line is horsepower. As you can see, the bigger carb did help the power with peaks of 531 pound-feet of torque and 557.2 horsepower. So this will be our keeper for the carb side of our shootout. Now let's switch over to the fuel injected build. Besides swapping out the big four barrel carb for EFI, the main difference with this engine is the ignition system. To work with EFI, Dorton switched out the Pro Billet distributor for a crank trigger sandwiched between the ATI damper and the crank pulley. 
There's also an MSD cam sink in the distributor hole to monitor the position of the camshaft. This is necessary because the cam position sensor can tell the engine management system when the number one cylinder is on the compression stroke. Also, the unique intake manifold we're going to be running won't even allow a small cap distributor. The engine management and electronics are all handled by FAST. This includes a standalone ignition module and an individual coil setup. Those coils will be hidden in the hot rod truck this engine will be going into, but for now they're just hanging off the sides of the engine on the dyno. Now we need to discuss the Borla injection in a little more detail. This is a build for Johnson's Hot Rod Shop out of Gasden, Alabama. Johnson's does some really beautiful and very unique builds and they came up with this setup that Dorton will be using. It turns out that the Borla throttle bodies aren't actually Chevy specific. These are actually what Borla calls their 3004 series throttle bodies. They are a direct replacement for the old Weber DC and F carburetors often found on Ferraris, Maseratis, and Aston Martins. They are really cool and we can see why Johnson's wanted to find a way to fit these to a small block rather than the usual Chevy stuff because the side-by-side -side setup looks really different than Borla's Chevy throttle bodies that you can see here. It makes for a pretty unique look. But that also means that this can't really be a be-all end-all test of carburetor versus fuel injected throttle bodies. These are eight 44 millimeter throttle bodies with injectors rated at 36 pounds per hour. While the Chevy kits that Borla offers use much larger 50 to 58 millimeter throttle bodies. Plus, we're using a pretty unique intake manifold that isn't even readily available anymore. So obviously you can make more power with a modern complete Borla induction kit for the small block Chevy. But since we had the two systems on basically identical builds, we still couldn't resist. What's so unique about this thing, it's going in a hot rod, um, and I've never seen a manifold like this, this four two barrel setup. It has no names on it, and it came from a swap meet that our customer got years ago. So we cleaned it up and made, some, made a few changes to it. Mainly, we used the underneath of it as a balance chamber. So we've got some holes drilled in each runner so it thinks it's still got a common plenum. That way our map sensor is getting a good reading. But uh, surprisingly, uh, this thing made uh, more bottom end with basically the same component, same camshaft and so on as the single four barrel manifold. So uh, it's gonna be a really cool piece in the car. So let's get this bad boy up on the dyno and see how it runs. After a quick break in and double check to make sure that the fuel maps are correct, we were able to pull the handle for a couple of runs. Here's the dyno chart. The blue line is torque for the 830 carb and red is horsepower. Now, here's the dyno run with a 3004 series throttle body. The green line is torque for the EFI system and purple is horsepower. Note that the EFI started out making more power at 3500, but the carburetor took over by 4150 RPM and didn't look back. Peaks were 505.9 pound-feet of torque at 3600 RPM and 475.9 horsepower at 5600 RPM. That's a difference of 25.1 pound-feet of torque and 80.4 horsepower going better to the carburetor. Obviously, the throttle body simply couldn't flow enough air to keep up. Dorton even pulled the run at 6000 RPM instead of 6200 because the power curve was already rolling over. But instead of giving up, Dorton decided to take another run at it. Each throttle body has a protective screen just underneath each pair of machined air horns and it's designed to catch small rocks or other pieces of debris before they can get into the engine. So of course we took them off. After pulling the screens, Dorton measured and noted that the wire used to fabricate the screens are 20 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Added up, that's a significant portion of the throttle body's barrel that's blocked off. So we took them out and gave it another shot on the dyno.
This time around, the light blue line is torque for the new run and orange is horsepower. And the results are much better. This time around, the throttle bodies outproduce the 830 CFM carb all the way up to 4,550 RPM. But after that, the increased airflow capacity of that big carburetor helped it just walk away in terms of power. This time, we had peaks of 516 pound-feet of torque at 4,900 RPM and 512.4 horsepower at 5,900. That's 10.1 on torque and 36 and a half horsepower better than the run with the screens on the throttle bodies, but still 15 and 43.9 worse than the carbureted option. Of course, real performance is about more than just peak power numbers. Here's Dorton on the real appeal of this EFI throttle body setup, even though it doesn't make the same power as the carb and single plane intake. Uh, surprisingly, uh, this thing made uh, more bottom end with basically the same component, same camshaft and so on as the single four barrel manifold. He had uh, made about 20 more horsepower with this at 3,500 RPMs than the single four barrel. However, at 6,000, we were down substantially. So, but see, this is gonna make such a good driving. It accelerates so good, uh, which is very surprising with this short runner. One of our biggest problems on doing this type of engine is uh, we wanna utilize our background in doing racing engines uh, our entire career, but yet we gotta realize that this thing's going in a street car and it's gotta take off from a stoplight from an idle on. So we work real hard on the tuning and the con mechanical configurations also to make this thing really good drivable off of idle and accelerating and even merging onto the interstate off in, in an off ramp. So I think uh, I was kind of surprised at how well these four throttle bodies did in comparison to the single four barrel. But this has a fast uh, ECU and uh, self-tuning so i'm hoping the customer's going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this thing a lot of people don't want to believe it but the truth of the matter is a properly sized properly adjusted carburetor can make just as much peak power as electronic fuel injection and that's pretty much been proven here the throttle bodies just weren't set up to flow as much air as the big double pumper carburetor However, a set of larger throttle bodies, like one of Borla's Chevy specific kits, could definitely make more power too. Still, there's a lot to love about this Borla system. In the old days of carburetors, a setup with four deuces like this EFI system mimics would have been an exercise in frustration when it comes to getting all four tuned and working together properly. With the fast self-learning engine management system, we had none of those headaches. Plus, with the fast EFI controls, it will crank easily on cold days, save fuel, help the engine to last longer between rebuilds, and best of all, provide great throttle response in all conditions. And when it comes right down to it, the look of those throttle bodies sitting on top of a small block is pretty tough to beat.